The room is relationships. The room is you and me and everyone in America. What are you talking about? Uh, the room is different cookie cutter mm -hmm. from Hollywood. Yeah, man, you never know. People are very strange these days. What's going on? Welcome to The Room Minute. The podcast where we get obsessed with the cinematic classic, The Room. One minute at a time. Yeah, you have no idea what kind of trouble you're in here, do you? Why are you so hysterical? We always wanted people actually talk about it. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Allison. Oh, hi, Rob. Oh, hi, listeners. We're here to talk about Minute 66 of The Room, in which there's just one more sex scene. And I appreciate you bringing me in to close the loop on those. Oh, hi, Walt. Thank you for being with us. Well, we needed to know, really, because people that were on um, sex scene minutes before is, what is your favorite um, sex scene? Uh, of any movie ever? Sure. <laughs> Maybe oh, some this masterpiece. Oh, <laughs> actually, that's that one's an interesting question, too. But I mean, any movie ever. Oh, man. Um, wow. That's a great question. Um, let me think about that one for a minute. Okay. Um, that's one thing I've not not rated before. Um. I mean, there are some good ones out there. I think this one takes the cake for most awkward. <laughs> and, uh, wow. Okay, let me think about that one during the course of the episode. Mm. The eighty yard O's and moans don't make, don't work for you. <laughs> well, and in the robotic <laughs> movements also, where like she moves his hand to her head, and then she moves his hand to her shoulder, and then helps him take her dress off. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's like this guy has never even thought about being with a woman before. Yeah, there's just such an awkward, clunky, robotic scene. There's. Some reason for that, but it's basically at this point, Greg Sestero was tired of the film. And so he didn't want anything to do with this. This scene was not in the script, as a lot of scenes weren't. They had shot, spoilers, they had shot the suicide scene already downstairs. And then Tommy decided he wanted a bedroom set. So the bedroom set didn't exist. And so they built the bedroom set and he decided he wanted a sex scene with Mark and Lisa in the bed. And Greg was like, uh, in his book, he's like, I don't even know where this scene was going to be in the movie. It was going to go somewhere. He's like, it was awkward. I didn't want to do it. He thought about Lisa and her having to do multiple sex scenes. And he's like, she's in a much worse position. I'll go ahead and do it. And so you get this scene where it feels like neither one of them want to be there. It's definitely the feel you get. Yeah. And we're a few sex scenes in. So at this point, the choice of songs are getting worse. This one is called Baby You and Me, by the way, performed by Clint Gamboa and Belle Johnson. And it's not very good. Isn't the, this whole scene is just terrible? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It, it's the fact that Greg points out that he had no idea where this would fit is kind of telling is that the scene doesn't need to be here in the movie and it isn't very good for being here. I, I just, so much of this movie you feel like is puzzle pieced together and, and doesn't always make sense. There's not a flow all the time. Yes. And so you, you, you feel like you're you're making a weird jump and it's hard to get your mind in the right place for whatever's going on time after time after time and it's really frustrating weirdly for the most part it was filmed in order too uh, i mean other than the sex scenes exterior stuff and so it should flow better than it does but it it doesn't the audio doesn't even flow oh, it does <laughs> you can't say <laughs> oh without moving your mouth <laughs> I think that's really a you problem, Allison. <laughs> Sounds like a personal thing. Yeah, so they're having sex. And I had one note on this minute and I never got to it about the sounds. I do have notes for a minute. For the midnight screening. 
as the sex scene begins, you chant, sex scene four, sex scene four, sex scene four. And then the audience attempts awkwardly to clap to the beat of the song. But once again, the song they picked is way too slow. And it goes horribly, which just makes it funnier. And that's all. Uh, Well, I don't know that I've got anything else to say. I mean, that was just a terrible minute but that's okay because we've got worse things to talk about because it's what? friday it's friday friday i know it it all sounds like some bad movie i actually offered one up to walt to watch for today because i've been wanting to talk about this one we already talked about neil breen's double down in a previous episode I believe the week you were here, Walt, actually. Yeah, I think we did. And so now I would like to talk about Pass Through, which is Neil Breen's fourth film. And I think he's getting worse. To be fair, I've only seen part of his second one, and then I've seen the third of it. He's made other movies? He has a fifth now. (laughs) Yes. Yes. His new one, his newest one is called Twisted Pair. He plays identical twins, who I think are aliens. All all of his movies, he's kind of got like a savior complex going on or he's the guy who could save everybody or kill everybody or both well this one definitely has that 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 is the one element that you actually can recognize out of this movie this this movie starts very slow very boring it cross cuts between a bunch of people illegally crossing the border neil bringing out in the desert by himself doing something and some kids seeing something in space which I'm still not entirely sure. You forgot about the, the tiger appealing, appearing out of nowhere. Well, the, yeah, that's his, his, his tiger friend in oh, the yeah. secret cave thing. Yeah, and you forgot the Jerry Garcia lookalike sitting in the desert pondering life's questions. Yeah. Uh, essentially, Neil Breen plays an AI from, was it 4,000 years in the future? That's who's right. come back to do something? We're not entirely sure what he came back to do, but what he ends up doing is where we get the only real, the part of the movie I kind of like watching, even though it's still dumb, is the middle section of the movie where he wanders around and talks to uh, rich people and reporters and stuff and points out that everything they do is corrupt and. Oh, and they really, you know, we talked about editing on the other movie. The editing here, it may be the worst editing I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. yeah. It is so disjointed. Well, at the beginning, yeah, it's it's cutting between all those different things. And it's like, are these near each other? I mean, they're all in the desert, sort of, but there's no sense of place or time. It's just all this stuff just happens. Yeah, well, like the, the scene where the girl is standing there and she's got a rock and the AI guy is trying to come do something. I'm not really sure what. And she says, if you come near me, I'll kill you. He takes another step. She hits him with a rock. Don't come near me. I'll kill you, you fucker. I won't hurt you. And then she, the next scene, she's like, like, there's no, like, she doesn't sit there and stare at him and feel sorry for him, or she doesn't have some kind of revelation of who he is. No. She all of a sudden starts dabbing his head and saying, let me help you. I'm not going to hurt you. And go through. And there's no explanation of how they got there. Right. Which is which is a lot of this movie, and they film a lot of like things too close, with like the immigrants being pushed into a truck. We don't know where the truck is. We don't know it is in relation to anything else. Got the cameras too close. They use the same truck in two different shots. Yeah. And two different groups of people being pushed in. I was totally confused by that. How are you? You know, I'm very sorry for hitting you in the eye. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going to hurt you. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. No, just let me tap it a little bit. Get the blood off. See? I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm sorry. And then the two women run away from the group, and then you see them in the group getting pushed in the truck like a minute later, even though they left. So it's like the editor... The editor being Neil Breen and another one other guy, I forget his name, some Italian guy, just didn't pay attention to that detail because, you know, why would you? Yeah, well, exactly. And they also, the guy with the Glock shot them 
as they're running away, they couldn't have been more than 10 feet away. He empties a magazine on them and doesn't hit either one of them. Right. Doesn't chase them down. It just shows them, no. like, dive into the dirt. <laughs> also, did you notice when the um, the guy who, I guess, dies or whatever, when he was shooting up, he was shooting powder? He had not even melted the stuff into a liquid? Oh, no. Like, he did... Oh, what? no, I didn't notice that They one. didn't even, like, <sighs> take a second to drop coffee on there to make it look like it was melted. It was just powder on the tinfoil. Wow. <laughs> I'm assuming the editor was blind because the cuts are so bad. It was almost like he was cutting by sound instead of visually. He's like, here's a quiet moment I'll cut here. Uh, <laughs> Mid sentence. Sounds perfect. That does make that does make a sort of sense. Yeah. Oh, I'm assuming these are not actors that were in this movie. Were these like friends of his? No one knows. Neil Breen is a very private person. He's so humiliated over his work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he, I think he hires day players. Like he probably pays them, so I guess technically they're professional. But no, I think he doesn't hire like actual actors. I know in yeah. Double Down, no one's even in more than one scene except for the woman who plays his wife in flashbacks. It's like, why are people even here? The acting was bad. Yeah, the act- if you can yeah. call it acting. Like, Speaking of bad acting and bad editing. As I said, my favorite part of the film is when he's confronting, like, the bankers and all the other people at, at a big mansion. But for some reason, they didn't actually film in a mansion. They filmed in, like, in front of a green screen and inserted it into oh. photos of the interiors of a mansion. That was horrible. Oh. But then they keep switching which room they're in and how the people are standing around each other. And as if we can't recognize the people from shot to shot. It's like a mobile and home it's commercial. Just, it's really, it, yeah, it's just weirdly done. You could, he probably, he may have thought he was going for something meaningful by having them all in this, like, switch positions. They're all interchangeable, but that's me doing the work for him, and I, I don't want to do it. The other thing about it is it was so overtly political Yes, that mm. you felt like you were watching a uh, a propaganda piece instead of a movie that was supposed to entertain you. And I understand you, you know, you can use entertainment to get a point across. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh But this just became so overtly political that it it became unwatchable. Yeah. Even more unwatchable. Well, right. When he takes over the newsroom and makes the news people disappear, he gives a rant that's like five minutes long, like just talking to the audience of the film. And and like, who are you, what are you talking about? dude? (laughs) That was, that was my question is I really was, I was like, what? What just happened here? What what am I watching? <laughs> and then the movie keeps going, pretending you know it has a plot. And I'm not even sure what happens at the end. And I've seen the movie all the way through a couple times. Like I, I I don't know. There's piles of bodies and the northern lights and something. Probably for the last five minutes I just kept checking to see how much longer. Yeah. And it was just so bad I couldn't wait to get it done with. Now, I, I did want to point out the, the thing in the end credits that I love because, of course, he gets a credit produced, written, and directed by Neil Breen. It, of course, also stars Neil Breen. But at the end of the credits, it says, any of the above listed companies in the credits with an N or a B in their name are fictitious. This work was actually done personally by Neil Breen. So I scrolled back up to look at the credits. That's everything except for the sound. They had a company called Spectra come in and do the sound, and he's even listed as the sound editor. So essentially, he did everything, including being the boom operator, while he's the star of the film. He operated the boom while he was starring in the film. Yeah. Yeah. I think Tommy was so needs to up his game, really. <laughs> I mean, this makes the room look like a production... I mean, this is unbelievable. Yeah. I wonder whose tiger that is. It does have a name. It's like Vlad the Tiger. What else has he been in? <laughs> Let's see, is he on IMDb? I was wondering if he's the same tiger from like uh, Bachelor Park or um, Hangover. It could be. I believe Neil Breen works around Vegas. Let's see, is the tiger on IMDb credits. There are way too many people who are excited to have their credit on IMDb for this thing. Wait, Donald Trump's in this movie? What? Apparently, one of the people he talks to is supposed to be Donald Trump. It says George Arrett as Donald Trump. Oh, I don't know which one was supposed to be Donald Trump. Um. 
Bank president, news person. I'm just saying they have to go back and watch this, but I'm not going back to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> IMDb does not have the tiger. Oh, wait, there it is. Its name is not Vlad, it's Viad. Oh, Viad is an actor known yeah. for Pass Through 2016. It's the only credit. That poor tiger. Your career is going nowhere, Viad. <laughs> You're just jealous of that tiger and Wendy right high. now. <laughs> 5.5 out of 10. That is generous. <laughs> ah. So, um, there's, we don't really need to tell you much more about Pass Through. If you want to go watch it, uh, don't. <laughs> if you like bad movies, you should watch at least one Neil Breen movie. Double Down is probably more entertaining, but there was a point watching this movie again last night where I just started just laughing, like, at nothing, because it was so just bad, and the one woman who kills the immigrants keeps yelling at everybody. Oh, yeah. That she has no, she has no value for them on the streets, and she, I will end you. You two are of no value to me on the streets. I'm all he's got in the world. Grandma, why'd you shoot her? Because I have absolutely no value for you two on the streets. I will kill you. I'm like, that's not acting. Who the hell are you? What the hell are you doing in my house? This is my universe. I will kill you. I will eliminate all of the people like you that have ruined this planet. You are done. No, you are done. I'm done. Done. You notice a lot of them die off screen and they should, they come back. Oh, yeah. Bodies. Uh huh. And I'm pretty sure each of the groups of people was the same people. They just changed their outfits, which is really efficient filmmaking. And then in the end, uh, what's what's he call himself? Till? T-G-H-I, I don't know, L-G, I can't spell. Light spelled backwards. I can't spell backwards. Yes, it's light spelled. T-H-G-I-L. I'm not good at backwards spelling, apparently. Your name, Till. That isn't your name. That's light. L-I-G-H-T. Spell backwards. Isn't it? Which he reads off of a light and fit plastic container because they ask him his name. Have you seen the future? I am the future. I guess AI doesn't need names in the future or something. Who knows? Oh, and did you notice that when they were in the um, the mobile home commercials and that lady was going through her little diatribe thing she is obviously reading a cue card oh so many of them seem to be all the immigrants talking about like why they came to left their country i'm an addict i have nothing i'm empty inside i have no life i was weak but i've learned that we can all all of us can be strong and get through these hard times. I hate the politicians in my country. They are so corrupt. They persecute my family. They kill my husband. I'm pregnant. And I just wanted a better life for my child. I have no husband. I just want my baby to be safe and happy. It's more than what I ever had. Now wait! We paid a lot of money to get into this country. I left my country to make a better life for my family. I hate the politicians in my country. They're so corrupt. They killed my wife. I was weak, but I learned to be strong. We all can be strong. I was being abused by my boyfriend. And I thought that he was going to kill me. So I had to run away. And I escaped. All I wanted to do was leave my country. To find a better life for myself. They killed my friend in the desert because she 
wouldn't. <laughs> What's it going to take to make the change happen? When's the change going to happen? When? 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 I realize what I'm doing is illegal, but I got to do it. They're all criminals. They lied to every single one of us. It feels like they had never seen those lines before. Those were horrible. It's like, here, read this. There, now you're an actor. They killed my whole family, mm -hmm. and that's why I want to come to this country. And then the guy said, they killed my wife. That's why I want to come to this country. It was almost like a game show. Mm -hmm. Who did they kill in order for you to want to come to our country? Well, but then Till has great advice. Go back to your country and take over. Go back to the countries that you came from. Make a difference there. Take power. Organize your citizens. Lead a revolt against the politicians, the corruption, and the injustices that we all know. Now go! The politics of this movie are, are both really obvious and really stupid. They, they are on both, both accounts. I'd agree with you. Yeah. And oddly, you and I come from very different political leanings, Yeah. but both of us were equally as disappointed uh -huh. <laughs> with the delivery of the message. Because like the beginning of this movie, you're like, okay, this is a guy who's going to be like defending immigrants and explaining why they come here. And they all actually explain why they come here. Like, yeah, he's going after rich people. And they're like, but then he's saying just such stupid things and not solve. I'm oh. like, what are you doing? Yeah. What is this? Well, and then did you notice his bad list at the end? CEOs, criminals, international lawyers and accountants, and reality show participants. <laughs> I don't know if that was a swipe at Trump for, you know, being on um, whatever the You're Fired show. The Apprentice, yeah. Or if that was The Apprentice, yeah, thanks. So I don't know if that was a swipe at him or if it was just kind of a swipe at that whole industry and how vapid it is or... Yeah, that's that's the problem with Neil Breen is he's yeah. got weird giant ideas and he's got... There's voiceover in this movie that is unconnected to anything on screen. You cannot travel the path until you have become the path itself. And his weird philosophical nothings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's pass through. This movie makes the room look good. Yes. See, that's why you need to watch it. Watch it and then come back to the room. This is fine. <laughs> we look, wow, this is so well put together. This is such a good movie. This is amateurish, but it's not that. It's not that. Not as bad as. Well, it's that bad, but not compared right. to this one. It's like an inoculation against the room. Yeah. You watch a Neil Breen movie and Tommy was so come across like a genius. It's either that or drugs. Do you think that's his goal? To, like, make bad no. movies? No. Oh, no. Do you think he's really trying? Yeah. Well, if the listeners want to hear you talk about better movies, where can they do that? You can hear me talk about better movies just about anywhere else in the world. <laughs> but definitely <laughs> at The Wilder Ride. Uh, that's the podcast that I uh, co-host with Alan J. Sanders. And Alan and I have covered a couple years worth of uh, Gene Wilder movies in the movie by minute format. Uh, first season was uh, The Great Young Frankenstein. Our second season was Blazing Saddles, which is a a crowd favorite often, and now we're working on Silver Streak. You can also find us at facebook.com slash the wilder ride. You want to follow us there and then join our listeners group. We've got a ton of stuff that goes on in there with postings on all kinds of things about entertainment. So it's definitely worth taking some time just to hang out there and check out what people are posting and talking about. So it's nothing wrong when people make it fun of the project. Security! Security! Help! Security! You won't need security. You're gone. I am not of this earth. I am artificial intelligence from far into the future. I have taken on this human body in order to communicate with the humans. I have taken control of this international media center. What you are seeing now is being broadcast throughout the world. Human evolution has ended, and there can be no further advancement. 
The turning point is now. There are genetic and psychological limits to the primitive human species, and you have reached those limits. You have demonstrated your inability to live in a truthful, honest, trustworthy, and accountable way with your fellow man. Illegal wars, the abuse of the media systems, films, TV, radio, the internet, as vehicles for a positive change. It's insulting. The glorification of violence and corruption, as well as political correctness and the fear of the truth, has ruined the human species. No more excuses. No more second chances. No more third chances. No more warnings. No more sympathy. The humans have tried that for hundreds of years, and it hasn't worked, and it never will. I have eliminated 300 million humans from the planet today. In human terms, I have killed them all. These were humans that were harmful to other humans. They were cheats, thieves, criminals, liars, abusers, corruptors, dishonest humans, those who abused other humans, the planet, the environment, as well as children and animals. They do not deserve to live. They are all gone now. I have turned them all to dust. The human glorification of violence, corruption, corporate corruption, failed political systems, failed judicial systems, failed educational systems, failed environmental systems, and on and on. Just think what it would be like if all humans were completely honest. Completely trustworthy, without question. But that's impossible now. Remove corrupt and harmful politicians and leaders from all over the world. Don't wait for a failed bureaucratic system to help you. Do it yourself. Take action now. Remove harmful and corrupt corporations. Boycott them. Close them down. It's the only thing they're going to respond to. Take the lead. Violate laws and regulations that aren't in the people's interests. Overturn them now. Don't be naive, weak, and ignorant of what is right and good. This is what's led to the decline of your species. Ask the hard, true questions and give the hard, true answers. Be leaders, not followers. The current state of decline of the human species is an insult to our intelligence. The revolution has begun. Your revolt, it must start now. The cleanse has begun.